So this morning we have uh, some gentlemen that played cowfish last night. We have Don Haugen, who's a local experimental artist, and Austin Rich, who's from Salem, right? And uh, he used to, both of these guys used to be on the air here. Um, Don, say hello. Good morning. Where we just do the pantomime version of radio the whole time. It's like a Raymond Scott tribute. I think I think Mark likes to ride that mute button. He likes to mute people. Mm. He likes to control. Yeah, I see. All right. Well, anyways, uh, Radio 101 there, Don. Uh, how you doing? Good to see you. Good seeing you too, Mark. And we have Austin Rich over here. Austin. Hello, hello. Yeah. And uh, when were you guys on the air here? Well, yeah, I started in 1998, uh, which was my uh, very first uh, radio uh, exposure. My mom had done radio. There had been some other radio in the family. Um, so it was kind of fun to see it happen. And then uh, I've pretty much been doing radio on the community level ever since, but not necessarily in Eugene. <laughs> How about you, Don? I know you've been around here. For yeah, I, was, I think I was doing radio around that time as well, and I... Then left and then came back and co-hosted the Sonar Sonar Map Radio Show with um, Sean. With Sean, yeah, we did that for for years. And then um, he left, and then I did my own show on Tuesday nights. Yeah, and uh, as I recall, it was quite the show. In fact, I tuned in. Remember a long time ago, back in the OOS. Yes, mm-hmm. I tuned in one day, and you were playing dental drill noises. <laughs> like that's true. Yes, like uh, <laughs> medical machinery and stuff. And this was like at not like, like ten in the, at night. This was like at three in the afternoon or something like that. Yeah, that's true. It was really awesome, and I'm like <laughs> driving around. And I'm hearing ding, 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 ding. it was so cool. Well, uh, these guys are s- supposedly part of the so-called noise community. How would you describe the community of, of experimental artists here? In, hmm. uh, I I definitely lean more towards the just experimental descriptor more than noise. I, I think noise brings a very specific connotation now, especially because harsh noise is very popular. And so you will go to these shows, and even if it's a diverse bill, there's at least one or two guys who just have feedback and screaming as part of their aesthetic, <laughs> um, which is fine. I like that stuff, too. Uh, but I feel like experimental covers a wider range of things because you can have improvisational, electronic fits in there. Uh, kind of what you do is also under that umbrella. But, I mean, you're almost kind of more in the doomy kind of range as well. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I I, th- I I like the larger umbrella, um, but uh, noise also kind of works in a certain way. Um, it just, I think it depends on the audience. Um, I think using the word popular just to describe noise is kind of overreaching. I mean, <laughs> we'll have handfuls of people. Right. <laughs> sometimes, if you're lucky. Um, it's a pretty niche genre, pretty small, mm-hmm. but it's a pretty tight community. Um but it's kind of like you know, weirdos kind of gravitate towards each other. Yes, and uh, yeah, it's to me, it's like kind of a lot like how the punk scene used to be. Yeah, where like you know, back in the '80s and the you know, back for me in the '80s, for you, Mark, in the '70s. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like what was considered punk was a lot of things. Yeah, mm. and oh yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, it was new wave, but new wave encompassed punk. Uh, you know the angry stuff that ki- her, you know the maximum rock and roll type stuff that occurred later. Right. There was a lot of fun stuff. Even the B fifty twos were considered punk rock. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. And then you'd have like these shows where you'd have, you know, bands that were so different stylistically that would play shows together. And like now it seems like things have gotten more segmented and where things are more like yeah. each other when yeah. you have shows. Well, there's this phenomenon where like what used to feel like going to a punk show felt like so like liberating. You go there and everyone's identically dressed. Everyone right. is playing songs that are all through the fat mic filter. That and is such a great comment because I, I got so tired of the punk rock thing back around 82 mm-hmm. and formed like a trash funk band at the time. <laughs> and, and, and just, just to be stupid, I was wearing like Sammy Davis Jr. outfits and things like that. But I went to. Uh, you're right about this whole kind of thing where you didn't. You went to a club and you didn't know what you were going to get. I'd go to the right. Mabuhay Gardens and there'd be a heavy metal band opening named Killer Watt, <laughs> and followed by <laughs> Zev. Do you remember Zev? Yeah, was, mm-hmm. Zev was cool. He'd bring a bunch of sheet metal on stage and just drag it around the stage and like crawl all over it and bang it, and, <laughs> you know. And then the the Avengers would play or something like that, and, and, and it'd be just three incredible different types of bands, mm-hmm. but. But then it turned into this thing where punk was 
two minute songs all about how Bush sucked or something, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and it was just like angry music with people screaming at you, right? You know, and uh, that whole thing. I got tired of it. So when I got on the air here at KWVA, everybody was playing punk rock in it, and they're like. <laughs> And so I got on on playing Martin Danny records and things like that. They go, wow, the stuff you play is real old. I said, how old do you think punk rock is? <laughs> punk rock's 40 years old at this point. You know, that's a long time ago. But uh, I'm sorry for digressing. Mm-hmm. We're talking here, by the way, in case you just tune in, with Don Haugen and Austin Rich, who played Cowfish last night. We're hoping that Mark Hostler from Negative Land comes in a little bit later to join the conversation. So let's talk about the gig. You guys played Cowfish last night. First... Uh, let's talk about the tour. What is, what is the tour called? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I, I, there's kind of two going on. Uh, Mark is doing his tour, which has been like in segments throughout the U.S. Uh, over like by. maybe the last. I week. just got to going on the market doing. Oh my gosh! How about that's exciting? <laughs> oh, somebody's phone I think is coming in here. Ooh. Nice. That was uh, some like, live remixing on the air. Oh, by the way, I got to remind the audience: if you're tuned in over the air and on Stream One, you have to switch to Stream Two. Go to kwvaradio.org. Go to Stream Two, or else you're going to miss it. We got volleyball coming up. I'm <laughs> sorry, Austin. You were talking. That's okay. Uh, yeah, that was amazing. I like that. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> in terms of the tour, so Mark's been doing these kind of segmented things, hitting different parts of the U.S. throughout this year. So this is his kind of West Coast leg. Uh, and concurrent with that, I'm doing a tour throughout the month of October, which I'm calling my October tour. Um, and uh, it, you know, I started on the 4th uh, down in San Francisco. I end with the Halloween show opening for Mark Hostler and uh, surprise guests, possibly. Um, so it should be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, you know, he's going on to do some other shows in Washington and Canada. Um, but I'm uh, hitting Washington myself, doing an Olympia and wow. uh, Bellingham show. And stuff a whole like that. Northwest tour. Uh, Don, how much of this are you involved with? Uh, I saw him in Corvallis, but I played with him in Eugene last night, and then I'm playing Salem tomorrow. So for first, tonight, you mean? Well, tonight, yes, <laughs> tonight. Yeah, while we're here, let's plug the gig. You're doing a gig in Salem tonight. Let's talk about where it's at, and you know. Yeah, so it's uh, the Space Concert Club, uh, which is on Edgewater in Salem. Uh, it's a cool little venue, uh, all vegan, uh, and uh, they're going to have Mark Hostler, Don, and I um, doing uh, solo uh, sets and. Uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. And uh, the space is this cool little bar where it's all ages until 10. Uh, so you can bring the kids. You can also have a drink. You can uh, meet Mark Hostler. <laughs> yeah, no prices, please. No mention prices right. or anything like that. So you guys showed up last night at the Cowfish. Let's talk about that gig. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, very much so. So tell me, uh, let's start off with a basic question. What was your favorite thing about the gig last night? I really enjoyed like so I you know we were trying to decide how to set up because the cowfish is really like a dance club yeah. for the most part and uh you know they have like this little stage in the corner and there's the DJ booth we're trying to figure it all out and it just sort of happened organically that we would both set up Mark down on the floor kind of in the audience and us up in the DJ booth and it complemented our relative sets very well I think and and it was mm-hmm. It, it kind of just like organically happened that way, but in a, in hindsight, I think we should have planned it that way anyway. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, my favorite thing was actually just like how generous Cowfish was. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they were amazing. Um, just not like their normal normal thing they do there. Yeah, and we're super friendly. Like worked with us really well. Um, came in early. Um, gave a hundred percent of the door to the traveling artist. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, that's amazing. Very Unheard cool. of. Very, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, big shout out to Sean media class and, uh, yes. Brian hip for, you know, the cowfish thing. Uh, it's just incredible. So, uh, you guys went in. Uh, did you have a crowd last night? Do you have any people? It was yeah. a good turnout. It yeah. was a really good, turnout. good turnout. Yeah. I mean, for what you're doing, getting more than five people is an incredible thing. Because <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> a, it's so popular, though, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Just the noise part. The you know, general experimental, not so It's much. the pop music thing. And mm-hmm. I would have come out, but I'm so old, my ears are gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I was telling somebody the other day, they said, oh, you got to go to this gig. I said, I don't go to shows anymore because I got tinnitus. And it just ruins everything. Yeah. So, so do you have any hiccups last night? Anything you, that you know you want to talk about that maybe you would have done better? Mm, not so much. Uh, I thought it was interesting because it is downtown Eugene on a Saturday night, and so there's what we're doing, 
And then meanwhile, kind of outside of the bar, you see this wash of like students kind of walking by and partying and, you know, some of them not quite sure what we're doing and maybe venturing into the bar a little bit. Uh, so it's kind of it's kind of like yeah. this interesting oddness. <laughs> yeah. Last night went off pretty flawlessly. Really. Yeah, it was, exactly. It went really well. Mm hmm. I think um, then probably the uh, I mean the only hiccup being that uh, Problemist couldn't play. Yeah, that w- that was very sad for me. What I w- happened? Um, Problemist was on the bill. Um, are you familiar with Problemist? From no, he did. Um, it was William Davenport. He did the Zine Unsound. Oh, okay. What, yeah. I've heard of that. Based yeah. out of San Francisco, right. and uh, I mean he was a big uh, champion of the kind of post punk scene, intentionally trying to get away from all of the. Uh, rigidness of what punk rock was becoming. Wow, uh, that, that's a full bill. You had four acts last <laughs> no, no, night. No, just three. We just, we played together. We played together actually. Oh, okay. like, yeah. So we played duo. So mm-hmm. so he didn't get a chance to get on, or yeah. he's having some health issues. So I'm hoping. Um, shout out to William. I hope he's doing better. I hope yeah. he's doing well. Ab- so. Absolutely. So. Yeah. He only just started to kind of get back into playing music after a very long break, and so right. I was looking forward to seeing him more and more and. And I, I hope this is just a minor hiccup. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, you guys got there. You set up. Uh, what do you start out with? How do you – what's your mindset when you're doing a set? Is it, mm. Do you go – do you look for something mellow at first and then kind of gradually – do you have like an arc, or or do you just assault everybody with noise? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, our set was really – pretty low key it was really we did a collaboration together which was only the second time we played together mm-hmm. and we had a we talked about a theme of doing like a 50s 60s science fiction oh that's cool type thing so it was like very much um, influenced by something f- for me at least uh, like Forbidden Planet yes and early yes. Star Trek mm-hmm. well and I'm a sucker for all those old radio serials as well and so a lot of my samples came from like Journey into Space the BBC sci-fi show and stuff like that where I, I you know the, I have this like memory where I, I just feel like I've endlessly listening to machines clicking and whirring from like some sci-fi thing that I'm listening to and so I love that soundscape of kind of like being in the, a ship somewhere and having to flip some dials and things see while you guys are having fun doing all this sci-fi stuff I'm at home watching Lost in Space there you go and I'm nice. watching that freaking robot up there going danger will or almost in danger that that's an exciting Saturday night for me Reverend Mark <laughs> 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 well anyways uh we're hanging around we're waiting to see if Mark Hostler from Negative Land is going to wake up this morning maybe maybe what we're going to do is I think we're going to take a little break here and play some of the mini mutations Austin brought some uh some of his stuff in. And this is from Confessions of a Social Network Junkie, something called Your News Feed. I hope you enjoy it. Now, that's why you need to be very targeted with your advertising to make sure that the right people who are interested in it can see it. But we'll... Finally, number seven, most important, pleasure is dopamine and happiness is serotonin. Now, depending on what which status it is, they may press in very hard on what happened in the details of that meeting. They probably know a good bit about it already. There have been uh, other people who are there have been in touch with the Senate. So uh, that'll be the focus, obviously. And I- Don't worry. It turns out I still have friends. I still know what's going on in the world as a computer scientist. I still collaborate with people all around the world. Confessions of the Social Network Junkie. regularly exposed serendipitously to interesting ideas and I rarely describe myself as black So I've been okay, but I'd go even farther, I'd go even farther and say not only am I okay without social media, but I think I'm actually better off. I think I'm happier. I think I find more 
sustainability in my life. And I think I've been more successful professionally because I don't. So my second goal here on stage is to try to convince more of you to believe the same thing. To see if I could actually convince more of you that you too would be better off if you quit social media. So if the theme of this TEDx event is future tense, I guess in other words, this would be my vision of the future, would be one in which fewer people actually use it. Now here's where I drive the artist crazy. Anybody want to go to Wow Hall to see the Beatles versus the Stones Wednesday? Give me a call, 3460645. Or Poncho in the Factory on Friday at Wow Hall, 3460645. As we've learned in recent weeks, it's enabled foreign propagandists to organize pro Trump rallies in Florida. Well, turns out dopamine excites the next neuron. Get on to that in a more advanced video. But this is where people would complain about your ad or hide your ad, and that's how you get into trouble with them. Now, if they ask, want to know why they're seeing this, or if you're interested in why you're seeing some of the ads that are appearing in your newsfeed on Facebook, Neurons, when they're excited too much, too frequently, tend to die. So, okay, so that's a big claim. I think I need to back it up. So, my thought what I would do is take the three most common objections I hear when I suggest to people that they Secondarily, they may look for some cooperation with the dossier. <laughs> Neuron has a defense mechanism against that. What it does is it reduces the number of receptors that are available to be stimulated. In an attempt to try to mitigate the damage. All right, we're listening to... Austin Rich Mini Mutations. Yeah, your news feed, and you saw them at Cowfish last night. Austin, what is going on here? Well, yeah, I am um, well, definitely listening to the news and uh, um, watching frontline documentaries and things like that. I started thinking a lot about uh, social media and my relationship with it, and uh, I definitely have a problem for sure, so I felt like I needed to address it. And this seemed like the best way is through some cut-ups and a little, a few drones. <laughs> it's a lot mellower than I thought coming from a noise artist. Sure, sure, sure. That's kind of my vibe, too. And I get that regularly where, like, I'll be at a gig and I'm usually the one who's, like, a little dreamier, a little kind of, like, I don't know, you know, zoning out. And uh, often people come up and go, like, wow, that was very mellow. It was very pretty. <laughs> yeah. Um... And uh, uh, by the way, we're talking with Don Haugen and Austin Rich, who played Cowfish last night. What is the name of the tour? Uh, it's like uh, I'm just calling it my October tour. Uh, yeah. but uh, I don't know if uh, Mark has a name for it. I think it's like um, they said it couldn't be dumb. It couldn't be dumb. Or and something. we're waiting for Mark Hostler from Negative Land <laughs> come in. But but these guys o are opening up on various dates on this tour, and you are playing Salem tonight, correct? Yeah. Don, Don tell us about the Salem gig. Well, uh, I think I'm on mute again. <laughs> Go ahead. Am I on now? There we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mark. Um, playing Salem tonight at the Space Concert Club, is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Yeah. And um, it's a all-ages show, mm -hmm. vegan vegan menu. They also have um, alcohol to drink for Indeed. the adults. 
Uh, we'll be doing solo sets. Uh, Austin will be doing his solo set. I'll be doing my solo set, and Mark Hassel will be doing his as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, my sets could be a little bit more um, sound art, um, droney. I'm using electroacoustic type materials. Let's talk a little bit about your style compared to what we just heard Austin doing. Uh, how would you compare the two? Or uh, uh, Where do you fit in in this so-called noise community? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't really consider myself a noise artist, honestly. But yeah, I, I see your name on the gig on the bills, though. <laughs> it's true. But, I mean, I, it's more of a – I mean, for me, it's more um, experimental. I, yeah. I'm really into experimental um, – I mean, I'm really like heavily influenced by a lot of different things than just like not just Mersbo <laughs> or, or static, but you know I love feedback. You know, um, right. like if you were going to compare your style, Don Haugen, to any other style, would you, would you say Mersbo? Would you say hmm. who would you compare yourself to uh, out there in the experimental world? Out there in the, uh, I would. Jeez, that's a good one. Um, Are you a Stockhausen or a Terry Riley? <laughs> <laughs> Probably like right in the middle. Yeah, yeah maybe halfway between. A little bit between. <laughs> because some some of this stuff can be very jarring and very random, and then other stuff can be very very well organized and very pastoral, so to speak. Yeah, I'm I'm more on the thinker side of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, less, I mean, I'm getting older, Mark, and a little bit more mellow. <laughs> so it's a lot less of like you know smashing things and flipping the table over <laughs> and a lot more like drawn out tones and like into layering lots of um, bass tones. Yeah. And well, we know, were talking a little bit a about this where when you're younger, you want to scream and smash and uh, kind of like make sure people hear what you're saying. And I think as you get older, you're like a little more can plun- can, you know, you're thinking about stuff more and you want to have it be like less of an obvious to, you know, you don't want to be so on the nose. <laughs> yeah, I get some heat here on the hangover because I tend to play a lot of stuff that's a little mellower on a Sunday morning, but it's it's Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Right. Everyone's hungover. <laughs> People are just waking up. They don't want to hear some guy screaming about politics in their ears. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear, like, really hard buzzsaw type guitars. Right. You know, this show used to be on at 8 in the morning, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'd come on with, like, the Montovani and, you know, the the lounge records and things like that, and people would go, well, it actually kind of fits my mood <laughs> for a Sunday morning. So um, I'm not saying that rock music or noise music has no place. I'm just saying that there's a time and a place for everything. And, and, sure, and yeah. Well, I think that's why we don't do these shows like in the middle of the afternoon either or, you know, like early morning. It's There's something about it where, like, it definitely speaks to the sun should be down. <laughs> Uh, we're speaking with Don Haugen and Austin Rich, who uh, played uh, Austin's from Mini Mutations. Uh, both have played uh, with Mark Hostler, who hopefully will be coming in, the guy from Negative Land. And we're going to talk about Negative Land's impact on music uh, when Mark shows up. But before we get there, I'd like to get into the history of how you guys got into this. Let's start with Don. Hmm. Uh, Don, were you a conventional rock musician before all this? Uh, a rock musician? Yeah, it's conventional. Probably not so much. <laughs> um, I was definitely into like, um, I mean, as a teenager, I was into weird music, uh, into weird rock music, primarily. Uh, I like when I was like sixteen, I discovered Einstein Design Neubauten. Mm. That's yeah. like been like my favorite band ever since, and like they really opened up my idea of the what music can be. Yes, yeah, it, you know, they're a prime example where the some of their stuff is just happiness. It's just so. <laughs> noisy and crazy but the other stuff is beautiful and pastoral yeah, yeah. So. and you know, I kind of like matured with the band with that band mm-hmm. were you in bands or were you just doing projects on your own pretty much up up uh, till now I played I played in like punk bands what I thought were punk bands in high school any mm-hmm. names that you, come on um, there's people out in Eugene yeah that so <laughs> uh, I, I played a, I played in a band when I was like 15, 16 called Nuclear Mutinous Dogs. All right. <laughs> See, and, there you go. And then um, <laughs> right when I was about 18, I st- started a band called Holy Rodent, which was mm. we played together for years. Uh-huh. Yes. And it was a, um, an industrial band, but not kind of with like drum machines, like the kind that beat on sheet metal. Yeah. And, well, and and you know we're grinding things on stage. Yeah, we we use a power tools. <laughs> I mean, the Neubauten influence is really huge on us, and Throbbing Gristle was mm-hmm. a big influence. Right. right. Um, but that band was together for years, and we played a lot of shows. 
yeah, on the West Coast. Yeah. And, and then you just kind of just do projects on your side, on the side now, right? Well, yeah. Well, it, now it's just a solo artist, but it was funny because I was playing in this, you know, really noisy, crazy band, and it wasn't weird enough for me. So I started doing solo stuff, the stuff I really wanted to do, which was starting to be more, I was getting influenced by Japanese noise at the time. Hmm. And then from there, it just progressed, and, like, bands break up as they do, and I you know, I don't break up because I'm a solo artist. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say would be your high point in your musical career so far? Something that happened or maybe a release or something? Um, geez, I, I played in New York in 2015 at a music festival, and I was on an artist panel with Zev. Wow, that was that was pretty amazing. The late Zev, and mm-hmm, had mm-hmm. Um, had like my vi- my video work shown with Phil Niblock. Oh. Hey! See, there you go. You're up there with all the champs. Yeah, so that was <laughs> cool. that was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. How about you, Austin? Uh, Where did you get your start, and uh, how did you evolve? Yeah, well, yeah, I was definitely a radio nerd as a kid, uh, and you know, having a lot of that kind of be an influence on me. Uh, but you know, I started out playing in punk bands uh, in Eugene. Actually, Cathead was our our group in the in the nineties that we op- we op- opened for a Holy Rodent gig at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I love that Cathead with Holy Rodent. Yeah, nice. you know we, we, we got to bat pe- each other around. You at know? Icky's Tea House. At Icky's, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so there you go. I think at I, Icky's. I think Icky's. I think I even have the flyer somewhere uh, <laughs> for that. Uh, but uh, you know that's so that's how we met uh, in the old days. Yeah. But uh, you know, radio was really my thing, and I specifically finding Over the Edge, Negative Lands show. Once I hit that, and once right. I was like on the air here at KWVA, things started to click, and I've kind of been on a twenty-year journey since then. Uh, but the music projects are kind of more new to me. This like re- you know, releasing things and touring and playing shows. Uh, for a long time, I was the guy who was having people come into the radio studio. Yeah. So I was like recording bands and uh, meeting bands, and like you know, got to interview Xene and Dr. Frank and all these you know kind of people and. Uh, and then uh, you know, you know, full circle again. I get to this uh, part of my career, and I'm like, you know, I really want to go back to that kind of collage, cut and paste stuff. It was kind of fun, uh, and so moving it out of the radio studio and into like venues and playing for people has been uh, really fun. Like I, I didn't know I wanted to do this this bad. <laughs> How about you, Austin? What would you say would be the highlight of your musical career? Or something you're proud of? I think this tour, uh, I've never done a tour before, and uh, being able to play shows not only with Mark, but uh, just in places that I really like, you know, on the radio here at KBUVA, I like uh, for um, Chris's show uh, was fantastic. Uh, but oh, you know, DJ Abulika, uh, yeah. I died. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, noise from the what is it? Uh, notes from notes the underground. notes from the underground, which I think is on Wednesdays here. I'm trying to remember Tuesday, here, Tuesday, Tuesday here at KWB. Tuesday is at eight. Yeah. yeah, didn't he big, take over your old slot? He did. Big yeah. shout out to you, Chris. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I was going to ask you guys something about um, recordings. Hmm. Uh, how is your stuff available? Uh, Austin, how do you get your recordings? Uh, well, the physical ones you can get from me, um, and that you can also order them through the Bandcamp page. Uh, but you can also download stuff through Bandcamp. Are they under Mini Mutations? It's uh, if you go to wtbc.bandcamp.com, and you'll find all the stuff there. Um, but yeah, I, I try to make the physical ones d- special, so there's extra tracks on the CDs that are not online. Um, and I sold out of my tapes, but the tapes were stuff that you couldn't get in any digital form. They were only on the tape. Um, so hey, tapes are coming back. They are. They, so <laughs> I, I, you know, I put all this effort into the CDs, and then the tapes just flew right. out. It's they were funny. just like, ah, we all want the tapes. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably because they're cheaper. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, anymore, people are willing to spend a fair amount because there's something about the. The novelty of physical media again. <laughs> how about you, Don Hogan? How do you get your stuff? Well, yeah, I try not to like have my stuff available as much as possible. Um, no, that's that's good. <laughs> I, like I, wa- that. I want to be obscure <laughs> right, during right, my yeah. lifetime. And this uh, is probably the bo- most high-profile thing you've done. <laughs> so I, I do actually. Um, I do have recordings on some multiple different lab- small labels. Um, I have a band cap that I don't keep updated. I put a lot of free stuff on SoundCloud. Mm. Uh, so I have a lot of free tracks on SoundCloud. I I will update my Bandcamp soon. Uh, I have some a lot of releases that don't ever go digital. Mm-hmm. So I have um, small lathe cut series. Yeah, 
of seven inches that are only available at my shows, basically. Nice. So, I love seven inches. Yeah. You know, I, I, I wanted to show you guys something. Um, uh, we have a mutual friend named Marilyn Kent. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And she gave me this box, and it's called Ladies in Noise. Have you seen this? I thing? have that. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, it's totally incredible. There's a book, and there's like three CDs of women in noise on here doing all kinds of stuff. I was going to play some of this today, but uh, I don't think we'll have time. But I just wanted to give her a shout out. Yes. Hobby Knife. Yeah, Hobby Absolutely. Knife. Absolutely. And uh, what is it? Squid- Squidopolis? Squidopus. Oh, yeah. Mark. Mark. There goes Mark. <laughs> go, go chase him down. Could you, Don, go chase Mark down? I think he's lost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Squidopus is great. Uh, oh, there we go. He's. The door. Yeah, we got him. We All right, got we're going to take a break, and we're going to hear something about Negative Land coming up here. This is a newscast about a release that Negative Land put out. We'll be talking to Mark Hostler. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Hostler. Absolutely. Absolutely.